Today's the day, my friends. After hours of experimentation and testing, I'm excited to tell you I found not just one, but three different ways to move the shield from the back to the front. I'll show you guys how to do all three different methods, but just like a good dessert, I've saved the best for last. So let's get started. We're gonna start with the simplest one first. Now this one is only aesthetic and it's not actually gonna move your shield. It's just gonna give the appearance that you're moving it. So I have a person here and I have them connected to simple movement and plus the game screen. Let's go into objects, simple objects, and spawn a sphere. We're gonna connect the sphere to the person and go in here. You can turn off visible. I'm gonna leave it on for now so you can see how it works and turn off destructible for this shield. Then we just need to change the connection point to center center. When you start the game up, it's going to look a little funny, but you can see he's protected from all sides. Let's go back into the programming and you need to make your texture face now. I'm going to be using a Captain America shield, so I have a Captain America texture here. Go ahead and connect it up to your sphere and make sure it's set on the Z plus texture face. Now when we start it up, we'll notice that it's behind him, which is where you want it to be. This is going to be the starting point for your shield. Next, we're going to want to clone this one, make a copy like that, and we're going to change this one to the Z minus texture face. Make sure you click Z plus off. So now it'll be on both sides and go ahead and connect this one up as well. Now we have it on both sides, the back and the front. We just need a way to switch between them. So let's grab a button, whichever button you want to use for your shield. And this is going to be the one that triggers your front side shield. Now we need to go into middle, logic, not. This is what's going to make your backside disappear. Let's use the input from the button and then connect it to visible. This is saying when you press the ZR button, this one becomes visible and this one becomes not visible. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So now I'm not pressing anything and ZR button. And just like that, we're able to switch back and forth. Now if we turn this thing invisible, you guys will see the illusion that the shield is moving from back to front. There you can see it, just like that. So it's not actually moving from back to front, but it's giving the appearance. So maybe it's not as applicable as the other two methods, but it's still pretty cool to see, and it's really simple to set up. The Hylian shield is probably the coolest one, and it's also not too difficult to make once you know what you're doing, but figuring it out wasn't easy. Let's go into Objects, Connections, and then we're going to grab a slide connector for X slide. This is going to allow our shield to slide into place. Go ahead and connect that to the person, and we're going into the settings of the X slide connector. Make the negative, negative 3 and the positive is going to be just three. This is gonna help determine how much it slides. And then we're going into middle and grabbing a map nodon under convert. This map nodon, we're going to set it at zero one, it's naturally there. The bottom one, we want negative one to zero. This should position it right in front of our character. Then we're gonna connect this one here, and we're going to need a button to use for the map. Let's go ahead and use ZL this time. Now when we do this, it's going to trigger the slide and it'll move the shield into place. Well, if we had a shield, let's go ahead and make one. Go into simple objects, grab a box, and this is what we're going to be using for our shield. We'll go into the settings and change the Z value to just point to. Then we're going to make it not destructible. Also make sure that the shield is connected at Z plus for its own connection point and Z minus for the target. This will be in front of the target and facing the correct way. Now we just have to hook the box up to the slide connector and then grab our texture to put on top of the box. For this texture, you might as well put it on the Z minus texture face. Let's go ahead and look at what it looks like. All right, just like that, when we slide it into place, you can see it starts over here and then we move it and there it is perfect. Let's go ahead and duplicate this button and put it over here just for ease of access. We're going to make this visible only when the button is pressed. And then you guessed it, we need to do something when the button is not pressed as well. Go ahead and link this over here and we're going to copy the texture. This one we're going to hook into the new texture and we can leave it at Z minus. The nice thing is that it'll be visible on both faces when using this method. 
We'll go ahead and copy this box as well. And we're going into the settings for this box to change it to the back side of the character, which means Z plus is what we need. Now connect the box to the texture and also to the person. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So when it's on his back, we can see the shield and the front texture, which is really nice. And then when we press the shield button, we have it on the front and the back side disappears. Let's go ahead and turn it invisible so you can see how it looks. Now we have it set up correctly and you can see when you press the shield button, it has a nice little slide into place animation. The only reason I wouldn't use this method, although it looks really nice with the front facing textures, is that that one box is still always existing which can collide with anything around you, including enemies. When I'm walking around, you can see that the uh -oh, hitbox will actually touch everything, including this fluff ball, and push it out of the way. So in order to have a solid shield, you cannot change with the press of a button, at least as far as I know, the physical properties. So that's the one major drawback of this method. Now for what you've all been waiting for, the best way to move your shield from back to front. This is probably the one you guys are going to use, and it's not quite as difficult as the last one. Let's head into Objects, Connections. We're going to grab a Z Slide Connector. This is going to allow us to move the shield on the Z axis. We'll hook it up to the person and change the settings. You're going to want the bottom end of the range to be at a negative 0.5, and the top end to be at 4. Now we're going to need a shield to move, so let's go ahead and go into the simple objects, grab a box, put the Z value down to 0.2, and turn destructible off. For the connection point, you're going to want both of these to be Z+. plus. It's going to be on the back side of our person to begin. Then go ahead and hook the box up to the slide connector. We'll grab the texture, and it doesn't matter where you put it. Let's go ahead and hook it up to the box. And make sure the texture face is set on Z plus as well, so it'll be facing towards the front. The last thing we need to do is grab a button that we're going to use. Let's go ahead and use the ZR as well as a constant. Make this constant into a negative 0.8. I had to play around with this to figure out the value. And it's kind of tough with these connectors, but not too bad if you just follow what I have told you there. Let's go ahead and calculate this with a multiply. And we're going to put the button press as well as the negative constant in there and hook these both up to the slide connector. If you did it just like I did, it's going to look something like this. And when you press your button to move the shield, it'll go right through him. Unfortunately, it's going to be backwards. Let's turn the visibility off so you can see the actual texture. So unfortunately, yeah, it's backwards on his back, but at least it looks the right way up front. And if you're using a first person game, it's really not even noticeable. The great thing is that the hitbox stays on his back until he uses it, and then it moves forward. It doesn't get in the way of anything, and it even despawns from the back so he can get hit from behind. It works the way a shield should work. So there you have it, my friends. Three different ways to move three different kinds of shields. If you guys like the content, please hit that sub button, and we'll be making some more awesome stuff in the future. Till next time, happy building, God bless.